Hey, Sadie and Jose. Okay, welcome to Consumer. Welcome to Chapter 5. Chapter 5 is about housing. Okay, housing. So that'll be a really important chapter because all of, um, all of us are going to have to determine what we're going to do in the future when is our time to find a place to live, okay? So for instance, um, you're going to be learning, I'm going to just read off the themes that you're going to see in this chapter, renting versus buying, which is what we're going to talk about today. Your mortgage loan. I don't know if you guys remember, but mortgage is your payment for a house, okay? So not your rental payment, but your mortgage payment is a payment on a loan for a house. Property taxes, homeowner's insurance, insurance is seguro, repairs and upkeep, furnishing costs, purchasing electricity, reading the electric meter, purchasing natural gas, other utility expenses. Remember I told you utility is water and lights most of the time. And then your telephone rates, okay? Which is kind of a weird one because we don't have telephones in our home anymore. We have them in our hands. Okay, so um, let's go through the section today for renting versus buying. When you guys first think about it, okay, you, let's say you're gonna start a family. What would you prefer to do, rent a house or buy a house? You're like just about to get married, you're gonna rent a house or buy a house, what is it? Okay, well there's advantages and disadvantages for both. Jose, I don't know about you, but like a lot of guys, they have it in their head that they want to buy a house, you know, they have, want to have a house like ready for um, getting married and everything like that, so you might be that kind of person. Or you might say that it's better to rent. I prefer that you rent for as long as you aren't sure exactly where you're going to be, right? Because um, for buying a house, it should be a long, long-term thing. That's just like how I grew up. Some people, what they do is they buy a house for a temporary time and make a lot of money off the house and buy a different house. So I grew up in the fact that we lived in one house. So yeah, it would make sense that my parents had bought the house. And we're paying a loan on the house instead of renting because we weren't moving anywhere. But like for me now, if I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to be, like, you know, in this neighborhood or that neighborhood or, you know, that we can't find like a specific terreno or a specific place that we want a house, I would prefer to rent until we find something that we like. Okay, that's what I would think about. But thankfully right now I'm blessed to have a house that I'm renting and it's nice, okay? So... You have to think about those things, that there's advantages and disadvantages to both of them. So let's read through this stuff and let's talk about that. It says the biggest, big, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna start again. The biggest expense most families have is housing. During your adult lifetime, you will probably spend 25 to 30% of your income on housing, at least 25 to 30%. Some people choose to rather to rent rather than own a home. The advantages of renting are Freedom to move, availability of money for savings, or less responsibility for upkeep. Okay, guys, those are good benefits. I like in my in my opinion, those are good benefits for younger people. But if you're gonna have a house, you're gonna have a family. It's good to eventually get a home, and I'll tell you why. But look, so you have the freedom to move. So if you're not sure where you want to go yet, yes, rent because then you're not tied down to a house that you have to sell before you can move. You can just get up and say, okay, once I'm done with this contract that I made with the person, I'm gonna rent this apartment for a year or whatever, I can go. Number two, availability of money for savings. So, because you're not paying on a, um, a house, a house is loan, sometimes it's very, very big, um, monthly payments, so you're gonna have more money available for savings because you didn't have to put a bunch of money down on buying a house, okay? Because the down payment on a house is big, okay? So if you're gonna put money, you're gonna go get a house, and yeah, you need to have saved up a lot of money for the first payment, okay? And that's not the same with the house, with the renting. So if you say, look, right now, there's no way I can put thousands and thousands of dollars down to save, to buy um, a house, and to put my first payment down on the loan and everything like that, then just go with renting and you could, until you can save more, right? Um, then number three, less responsibility for upkeep. And that's super true. Upkeep means your maintenance, okay? Manteniendo the property. You have less responsibility. It's so true. If, like, you don't have to do a lot of different stuff outside. If things need to be repaired, you just call the people and ask them to send somebody in to repair it. You don't have to look for somebody to, to do it for you. So renting is better in that case. And so, like, for us that are, like, young, like, single people who don't know anything about anything, about how to fix things, you know, it's better to rent, so you don't have to worry about trying to find somebody to fix it for you. Okay, even though really we do. It's just, because be careful who you rent from too. <laughs> no, I love renting here, but but um, 
but sometimes you still have to find your own people. But here, they're really good. They do send people out for, for certain things. Um, and then certain things, we have to find people. And there's, like, always people around. God always sends people. It was cool. They were building a house for um, Miss Bethany and Miss Karina and Miss Proxy. And we needed help with our sink. And those guys came in and fixed our sink. So that was, like, super, super helpful. Okay, so um, even when renting, sometimes you have to find your own people. But you don't have to focus as, on as many things as a house. For sure, you don't. Okay, but what are the advantages of a house? Well, let's keep reading and then we'll talk about it. So it says in the second paragraph, if you decide to rent an apartment or a house, here you need to know a few things. You will be required to pay a security deposit. Security deposit, well think about it, it's security for who? It's security for the person that's letting you rent the apartment. It says the security deposit is equal to one month's rent and is used to pay for any damage you may cause. So basically the way that you can look at it is you're paying an extra month's rent, okay? An extra month payment of rent so that they can keep that money and in case you do any daño to the apartment, they have that money to use to start the repairs. And if they need more, they're gonna ask you for it. But what they're, what they're doing, it's a security for them because you can't just like run away and, and never come back if you have to pay for that. No, they already have your money there, so they're gonna use that money for the repairs. If at the end of your contract with them, they never had to use that money for repairs that you did, they'll give you back the money, so that's nice. Okay, so that's why it's called a deposit. It's not a fee or anything like that. It's a deposit because you're depositing in there, but sometimes they're gonna give it back to you if they don't need it. So it says the security deposit will be returned to you when you move if you properly care for the house. Okay, third paragraph. Probably you will be required to sign a lease. A lease is a contract, okay, between the landlord and the tenant, okay? The landlord is the owner, the tenant is you, the renter, okay? And that's true, you gotta sign a contract, we did. The landlord gives the tenant use of the property for a stated length of time, so they're gonna say, okay, you are gonna be here for a year. You are gonna be here for two years. You are gonna be here for six months, something like that. Then guys, you have to stay there that time because if you leave, you can't stop paying. If you leave and you wanna stop paying, you have to pay a big multa, a big fine, okay? Because sometimes it does happen. Sometimes you're gonna to have to say like, okay, you got a job in a different state, in a different country, in a different whatever. Sooner than you thought, you're gonna to have to say, I'm really sorry, I'll pay the fine and I'm gonna get out of the contract, okay? But the landlord gives the tenant the use of the property for a stated length of time in return for regular fixed payments. Carefully read a, re a lease before you sign it. Make sure you read that contract because they get sick in some crazy stuff. Look at the next paragraph. Most people decide to buy their own home. The advantages of buying your own home are, sometimes you find it cheaper. Okay, the house isn't cheaper, but your payments might be cheaper or, um, because you can spread them out longer, okay? You have the satisfaction of knowing you own something of value. Guys, this is the a biggest one because think about it, you have an asset, you have value. If you came to a point in your life where you needed a lot of money, you could sell your house and you could go down to a smaller house or you could rent for a while because something happened financially, you had an emergency, you, had, you needed money. Also, you can leave it to your kids. When you die, you can leave it to somebody so that they have something from you, an inheritance from you. So having something of value is super important. And also it's security. You don't have to worry about finding another apartment after the lease is up. Like let's say you have to move every year, you have kids and different stuff like that. You have to worry about whether or not the renter people um, maintain the apartment and different stuff like that. It's not a good place if you're gonna have like kids Sometimes renting can be very, very inconvenient, okay? Because you're gonna have to be moving them all the time. So security that no one can kick you out. Like I just said, like if the contract is up and the people don't wanna renew the contract with you because they have other people that they wanna give it to or you know they have a friend that, they, that needs a place to stay, then you have to go find another place. And so you have to deal with that every year, every six months, every two years, so it can be frustrating. And then number four, you can make changes. So you can paint when you want to paint, you can build when you want to build. Sometimes renters won't let you do that. So there's a lot more freedom and a lot more stability with buying your own house. But if you're not ready for stability yet in your life, you don't need stability yet. You know, you're going over somewhere and, and gonna live there just to go to the university or live there just for a temporary job or anything like that, then yeah, renting is the way to go. 
Okay, so look at model problem number one. Daniel Myers and his family paid $8.90, $890 rent per month for a three bedroom apartment. How much do they pay annually? I'm not gonna put that one on the board, you guys. What do you do? If they pay $890 a month, what do you pay annually? You multiply it by what? You multiply it by 12, okay? So that's what it is for model problem number one. Model problem number two, Shirley and da Shirley Darty rents a mobile home for four hundred dollars per month. When she renews her lease, the rent went up. That's another thing wrong with with renting. The prices can go up quickly. That's not going to happen with your loan payment most of the time. It's going to stay the same because that's the contract that you had. The problem with the loan payment is how long can it be? Usually, loan payments for houses are thirty years. You guys, thirty years. Okay, so it's a long time. Sometimes fifteen. Okay, um, so when she renews her lease, the rent went up 15% more per month. What will her rent be after the increase? So you're just increasing 400 by 15%. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna do 400 times 1.5. Okay, 400 times 1.15 for them to increase it. Okay, now number, if you look at your ex exercises, one through three is gonna be easy, four through nine are gonna be easy because those are like the model problems, okay? But look at number 10. It says, find the first year's cost to rent an apartment with the following monthly rent if one month's rent must be given as a security deposit. So I'm gonna do number 10 with you. You're gonna pay $580 a month for this apartment. They wanna know how much you're gonna pay for a year. You would think you just multiply it by 12, but be careful, not on this one, you multiply it by 13, you guys, because remember, you have to hit the security deposit. And the security deposit is worth one month of your um, rent. So you have to go 580 times 13. So your answer is 7,540. You're gonna get that one deposit back if you didn't break anything, but you still have to put it in there as paying it, because you have to pay it at the beginning, okay? Then look at number 15. I'm not gonna do this one with you because I want you to analyze it, but I am gonna tell you the answer so you can see if you're analyzing it well to do the rest of it. It says find the profit for a landlord if, so the, pro, the landlord is the person renting it to you, find the profit for him if 85% of the rent is used for mortgage payments, insurance, property tax, and upkeep. So that means, they're, okay, the landlord is receiving, look at number 15, the landlord is receiving $680 but 85% of that goes to mortgage payments, insurance, property tax, and upkeep. So what is his profit? Just to let you know the answer is 102. So see if you can figure out why. If not, you can ask me. Okay, so the answer number 15 is 102. So there you go. Have a great day, you guys.